today you are going to be empowered to be a strong warrior for God. You're going to learn how to be a strong warrior in his army for his kingdom. It's important to know that we are in a spiritual war. We need to be aware that we are in a spiritual battle. It's so important. If we are blinded to this fact, if we forget about this fact, then the enemy can trick us and we're not even realizing we're in a battle. We have to have our armor of God on, be alert, be aware. The strongest warriors of God are ones who don't forget that we are in a spiritual battle. The ones that know their identity as a warrior for God's kingdom. And this is really opposite from the world's way of thinking. You don't, people don't normally just think, naturally think I'm a warrior here on this earth. You know, I'm part of an army. So we really have to go in the spirit and go against what the world says, how the world thinks, the world's way of thinking. We have to renew our minds to know, I'm in a spiritual battle. It's unseen, it's in the unseen realm, but it's very real. And Jesus has already given you the victory completely. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So Jesus is inside of you. He is greater than he, the devil, that is in the world. He defeated him when he was up on that cross and rose from the grave. He's defeated. But now we have to maintain the victory. We have to walk in that victory. It's only guaranteed when we walk in that victory. Our eyes have to be opened in the spiritual realm. We have to abide by the principles of the kingdom. We have to hear God's voice. We have to be able to discern between the enemy's voice and God's voice. We have to have the tools. We have to know how to defeat the enemy when he comes with his attacks. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means the weapon may form, but God's given us tools and the power to not allow it to prosper, to have the defense to quench the arrows that come our way so that they wouldn't prosper and, and hurt us and bring us down or kill us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone tuning in now. We're talking, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about, you we're learning today how to be a strong warrior in the kingdom of God. Now, there are many Christians that don't have this mindset, this identity that I'm a warrior in the kingdom of God and I'm maintaining this victory and I'm taking more ground for the kingdom of God with my brothers and sisters, partnering with God. We are taking ground on the devil's kingdom and we are moving the kingdom of God forward. So this is warrior mindset. And this is every day we gotta have this mindset. We're pushing the kingdom of God forward. Now, think about warriors in the world way, an army. There is so much training that's involved. The army that wins is the army that's strong. What makes a strong army is for every single person in the army to be strong. So God wants you to be strong. Do you know what makes you the most strong? It is when you maintain your identity in Christ. When you don't waver. When you can discern when the enemy is speaking lies to you about your identity and when you can refuse them. When you don't let those weapons to prosper in your life. That's what makes a strong warrior of God. So this is really important to know that what makes God the most proud and what touches his heart the most is when we mean serious business about being a strong warrior and staying steadfast in our identity. 
That's what touches his heart. And many people don't realize this. And what happens is the enemy comes with lies, shame, fear, anxiety, depression, saying you're not good enough, you can't make it, you can't do this, look what you did. He comes with all of these lies and the natural, the carnal, not spiritual, the carnal response is to go with our feelings, hear those thoughts and let our feelings take us and feel shame or feel fear or feel uh, smaller, not feel like a strong, confident, powerful warrior of God. The natural carnal response is to shrink back and take those as truth. Sometimes those voices are loud. I want to tell you right now is that when you start to be used by God powerfully, when you start to obey Him, when you plant yourself in a ministry, in a move of God, in a church, where the power of God really is, the devil is not happy. And it's important that we know this. We got to be spiritually wise and sharp. When you are a lukewarm Christian, you will not face the kind of spiritual attack that you will face when you are on fire for Jesus and when you're in a place of the real power of God. The devil can see in the spiritual realm more than many Christians can. So many Christians think that like lukewarm Christianity is fine or church without the power of God is, is the right way or something. But remember the kingdom of God is a matter of talk, not, is a matter of power, not of talk. It's not a matter of talk, but of power. So when there's not the power of God there, it's not the kingdom. So the devil sees lukewarm Christianity. The devil sees churches and believers void of the power of God, not believing in the power of God. And he loves that because that's not a threat to him. That's not a threat to his kingdom. He's concerned about, the devil's concerned about expanding his kingdom. That's what he, that's what his goal is. And so without the power of God, lukewarm Christians are not doing anything against the devil's kingdom. They may be saved, they may go to heaven, but in terms of their time on this earth, they're not uh, doing anything to expand the kingdom of God and destroy the devil's kingdom. So the devil's, the devil doesn't waste his time so much there. You know, the, think about the kingdom of God when we expand the kingdom of God, when we do work. It takes time, it takes money, um, it takes effort. It's not cheap. Even me sharing this right now, number one, even the anointing to grow in me took several years. And the sacrifice was a lot. And the money was a lot. Even right now, the equipment here, we have a light and we have a camera and we have a computer and we have iPad and we have a phone and all of this. There's, and even right now, the time here Time is being spent. Time isn't free. So anything we do to advance the kingdom of God, it costs something from us. Well, in the same way, it costs something for the devil. So he doesn't waste his time. Just like Jesus said to, to the disciples, when people don't receive you, shake off your feet and move on. Basically, he's saying, don't waste your time there. If they won't receive you, I have millions of other people that actually have a heart to receive me. And there's no way you, as one person, have the time, energy, and money and everything to reach every person on this world, you as one person. So don't waste your time there. You can be reaching other people who will receive you. 
So in the same way, that's how the devil's kingdom works. So he doesn't focus his time on people who aren't powerful in the kingdom of God. He focuses his time on people who are powerful in the kingdom of God. And this is so important for you to know. I'm telling you right here, you're listening even right now, you're receiving the power of God and the devil is ticked off. The devil hates that. The devil is very angry because what you're receiving, you're receiving anointing, you're receiving power of God. It is making you more powerful in God's kingdom. It's making you a more powerful vessel of God. It's making you able to take take back what the devil has stolen. It's making you to expand God's kingdom. Devil hates that. The times where I've seen the most spiritual warfare were the times that I was going higher in the spiritual realm. It was the times where I was obeying God on even a higher level. It is the times where God was really moving and I was there for it. In those times, God, the devil has tried to attack the most right after, right after that or right before that. Um, you got to remember that he can see what's going on in the spiritual realm. The devil is a spirit. Uh, so you have to be aware that these attacks will come so that they don't bring you down. So that you have your eyes open knowing, oh, I'm doing powerful things in the kingdom of God. I'm obeying God like never before. I'm experiencing the power of God like never before. I'm receiving teaching and anointing that's more power, more power of God than what I've really experienced before. When you are doing that, when you are going higher, open up your eyes and be ready to cast down the arrows that will come your way. You should have your eyes open, being aware, oh, now that I'm doing powerful things, it's like God's put me on the front line. Like, I'm in a battle, I'm in a battle. And, but this isn't, this isn't uh, frightening, but this is exciting because God gives you tools to uh, make sure that the, the arrows don't prosper, the weapons don't prosper, to maintain your victory and move forward. So I want to give you some examples when I started doing, when I started going higher in the spiritual realm, when I started obeying God on like higher levels and doing more powerful things, attacks would come and they came in different forms. Dreams, the enemy giving me bad dreams um, through people people attacking with their words and mistreating and things like that, um, miscommunication kinds of things and people just attack. Um, and then thoughts in your mind. And through all these attacks, there's something that the devil's, the devil has a purpose in this. Through all these attacks, the, devil, the devil's goal the goal that he has is to try to weaken you. He wants to weaken you in the spiritual realm. So you're the strong warrior of God on the front lines. You're strong. You're excited. You're ready to go. You're full of faith, full of joy, full of peace, full of zeal, full of fire. So the devil, he's not... He sees that you're too powerful to like wipe you out, but he tries to like shoot a arrow at your arm or your leg, like trying to weaken a part of you. So you're still standing, you're still believing in God, you're still, you know, wanting to be used by him, but there's a little weakening that the devil wants to do. That's his goal. I'm sharing this because it's so important you know the enemy's scheme and strategy. This is how God is giving you tools now of how to defeat the enemy when those attacks come. So, the goal is to try to weaken you. Weaken your confidence. Weaken your confidence in your identity in Christ and your identity as a warrior of God. 
God wants you to see yourself as strong, powerful, beloved by God that God is proud of you, that you're doing an amazing job, that you can do anything, that you are equipped for what God's called you to do, that God's chosen you. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Doesn't matter what people think about you. Doesn't matter what people say about you. Doesn't matter what, even if you've made a mistake, in this moment, it doesn't matter. It doesn't negate the fact that God's chosen you to use you powerfully, that he is proud of you, that he loves you so much, that he wants to use you powerfully, and that there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. There is no shame. There is no fear. These are the truths that God wants you to carry so firmly in your heart. Have the mind of Christ over yourself. Because the enemy's goal is to try to make you forget some of these qualities or all of these qualities that I just described. You're full of faith. You're ready to be used by God. You're strong. And the enemy will try to come in and try to make you feel shame in some way. He'll try to make you feel impure in some way. He'll try to make you feel unworthy of being used by God in some way. He'll try to distract you in some way. So you're not focused on being a vessel of God. Um, He'll try to make you think you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You're not equipped enough. Uh, these are the ways that he will try. That's what he's interested in. That's what his goal is. So it'll come in different ways through dreams. He will try to make you feel shame in a dream. Through a person, miscommunication can happen or even some a friend could be uh, more silent or something and all of a sudden this narrative starts to go in your head like, did I do something wrong? Um, questioning yourself, like lacking confidence and worry, fear, am I losing this friend? Things like that. It's voices coming from the enemy for the goal of knocking down your confidence in who you are in Christ and what God's called you to do, who he's called you to be as a warrior of God. Um, And he'll also use other people the enemy will will always he'll he'll try to send people that don't have the mind of christ and the eyes of christ to see you or jealous jealousy when you start to be used by god jealousy happens when you start to be used by god powerfully uh you become like a joseph son of jacob who had who was the most beloved and all of his brothers hated him they were full of jealousy so you'll see certain people like that in your life so the enemy will come with this, this hatred from somebody and the enemy's goal is to try to make you think that what they're saying is true. The enemy will, will try to play all sorts of tricks like, well, they wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't true. Maybe there's some truth to it and da 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 da. All these silly lies, they are nonsense. As we see in the Bible, the devil's up to no good through certain people. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. And he uses people to try to accomplish that, to try to steal your confidence, to try to kill your power in the kingdom, to try to, try to destroy you as that powerful warrior. That's, that's what he's trying to do. We see it through the brothers of Joseph. We see also with Joseph, the, this woman who made up a complete lie about him uh, in the in the in the court where he was a servant, saying that uh, he was trying to sleep with her, made up a complete lie. I mean, in the Bible's full of of all sorts of people killing their brothers, and the Bible's full of examples of how the enemy does some pretty messed up things through people, and it's always 
trying to attack the work of God. It's always attacking the servant of God that's being used powerfully. So God wants you to know today that you are powerful. You're going higher. And he's so proud of you. You need to be aware. It's important you, you see yourself as God sees you. Many people don't see how powerful they are, how much God loves them, how proud God is of them. And God's saying today, I am so proud of you. I love you so much. I never want you to feel shame a single moment in your life. Never, never. Even when you mess up, I never want you to feel that way. I am never condemning you a single time. That is God's true heart over you. The Bible says that in the presence of God is fullness of joy. It also says he will keep in perfect peace all whose eyes look to him. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So here we have you will keep him in perfect peace. So you, so it's not God's will for you to just have moments of peace here or there, but it's God's will for you to remain in perfect peace, to stay there always. Imagine that is really God's will for you, to be in perfect peace all the time. Psalm 1611, in your presence is fullness of joy. Where is God's presence? It is in you. If we're not aware of it, we're not living in his presence. It's like we're not receiving the gift that is there for us to have every single moment. But in your presence is fullness of joy. God wants you to be literally having joy all of the time. Peace and joy all of the time. It's not about an emotion, but it's about choosing to believe the truth, the truth that's in the word of God, that all of his plans for you are so good, that he never wants you to fear, that he works out all things for good, for those who follow him, that there's no reason to ever worry. He's in control. When we take the word of God seriously, we really can be in perfect peace and joy always. It will take spiritual strength and maturity sometimes. And it will be a choice a lot of the time. But it, is, it really is possible and it's God's will for you to be in peace and joy always. This is a simple truth. And this is what God wants you to know. This is the key right here of how to be a strong warrior for God. Is to know that your God is so good that he truly wants you to have peace and joy always. Even, even, even when you mess up, even if you mess up sometimes, none of us are perfect. Even if you mess up, he still wants you to have peace and joy. That's the key right there. So when these weapons start to come, It's like you need to know, that's a weapon. That's an arrow. Oh, it's not God's will for this arrow to prosper. No, it's not God's will for the arrow of shame to prosper in me. It's not God's will for the arrow of unworthiness to prosper in me. It's not God's will for the weapon of fear to prosper in me. It's not God's will for the arrow of doubt to prosper in me. It's God's will for me to remain 
full of peace and joy. And stay strong. Stay in the spirit. So there'll be times when there's no arrows. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He doesn't have enough ammunition to be attacking every single second. And he tries to be smart where if he can see that a certain arrow is not affecting you anymore, he won't even try it anymore. That's powerful. So there will be times when you don't have to choose this, when you don't have to be re renew your mind, I need to stay in peace, I need to stay in joy. But there will absolutely, and it will definitely be as you're going higher in the spiritual realm, there will be times when you have to choose peace and choose joy. It's such a lie of the enemy for to, to think that if you mess up in some way, that you should be sulking, you should feel so bad, you should have condemnation and shame. This is a carnal human natural response, but it is a lie of the devil. This is how amazing our God's heart is, that even when you mess up, he never wants you to feel shame. And he's speaking this strongly to you right now, because some, people, some of you think that you deserve it. Some of you think, oh, I messed up, I feel shame, this is my punishment. Many of you think like, I need to like sulk here and feel bad and have shame and be here for a while because this is my punishment. That's a lie from the enemy. God wants you to repent. He wants you to run to his arms and just change direction. He doesn't want you to run away from his arms and hide like Adam and he Eve. wants you to run to his arms, humbly apologize and say, God, help me, lead me into your will. And with a smile, with nothing but love, he's like the, the father welcoming the prodigal son back. Every time, anytime you make a mistake, the, the, the father of that, sto that story of the father welcoming his prodigal son back, just full of joy, throwing a party. That's God's heart for you. You need to run to him and you need to see him full of love and void, void of, sh of condemnation. Devil does not want you to know this. He does not want you to know this. This is what makes the most powerful warriors of the kingdom of God, to remain in peace and joy. This is a responsibility that God's given us. It's a responsibility keep myself, remain in perfect peace, remain full of joy so I can be a powerful vessel of God, so I can be a light. This is how God flows through you the most. He's able to flow through you the most. You're able to hear his, his voice more. When, when you allow those lies of the devil to come, it's like you're a clouding up your ability to hear God's voice. And God's not able to flow through you as clearly. So if what empowers, what, em, what will empower you is to know for you to stay in perfect peace and joy, it's actually very selfless. It's not about you. It's not about your personal happiness. But it's how other people are able to receive God the most powerfully through you that will empower you. These are tools that God is releasing to you now of how to be a strong warrior of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, Cash Kiwi. So good. First time I've actually watched one of your messages. It's just what I needed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. He had you tuning in for a reason. God is so good to orchestrate everything to position us to hear his voice hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah so this takes being spiritually minded this this 
This is spiritual training. You have to go in the spirit. But I want you to know that God is so proud of you as you do this spiritual work, as you put this effort forward to remain in peace and joy. That's what the devil hates, is for you to be confident. God's called me to do this and I can do it. I'm going to be used powerfully by God for you to remain in peace and joy, for you to reject every lie of the devil, shame, worry, fear, anxiety, unworthiness, all of that, for you to reject it all. Oh, that's what makes you strong. That's what makes the devil mad. Hallelujah. God is raising up an army now. He's raising up an army for those of you watching. God's called you to be a strong warrior of him. Hallelujah. We are in revival and he needs revival carriers for this revival to grow. He needs an army to expand this kingdom. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father for every person watching, for every member of your army of the kingdom of God. And I declare every single person watching right now, receive strength in Jesus' name. I, God is releasing deliverance right now. Some of you have had bad dreams that were recurring. And these dreams made you feel shame. These dreams made you feel down. God is delivering you right now from those dreams. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I declare those dreams to end now in Jesus' name. Be free. The devil has no power over you anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you have been having scary dreams, dreams that make you feel afraid to go to sleep at night. God is freeing you right now. You are free in Jesus' name. I declare that attack of the enemy must end now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Some of you have had people in your life that have spoken down about you, spoken against you spoken things that hurt your confidence, that you believed to be true. And God is revealing right now that those were lies. Those were lies from the enemy and they are not true. I declare those lies that have been truth in you to come out of you in Jesus name. Receive God's truth right now in your heart. Receive his truth. Receive his truth. You are amazing. You are powerful. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are chosen. And God's going to use you powerfully. Hallelujah. And every single lie and thought that's come to you in your head, a narrative that the devil tried to make in your mind, I declare that attack must end now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Repeat after me. I have no shame. I am pure. I am good. I am made in God's image. God is pleased with me. He sees me as beautiful handsome, perfectly made. God never condemns me. So I will not have condemnation. I will not have shame. I will not have fear. I am courageous. I am a powerful warrior of God. God is using me powerfully. Devil, you are a liar. 
re be repeating these words that I'm saying because there is power in your words. This is what makes the devil to flee. You are, have your armor of God on now with the sword of the, the, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So you're taking your sword right now and you are saying to the devil, your attack ends today. You are holding up a shield upon those arrows and you're saying, nope, they will not prosper. When you speak these things, it is very powerful what is happening in the spiritual realm. This is your victory and this is your deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I am free. Devil, you have no power over me. You are a liar. You can't lie to me anymore. I am worthy. I am loved. I am chosen. I have more than enough. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.